Hey guys, International Novice here. Um, I just wanted to go over this 15-10 minute game that I had. Um, I actually just played it about, mm, probably about 30 minutes ago. So, time control is 15-10, is and I was playing against my opponent here, Valera2307. Alright, hopefully you guys enjoy this. So, I start off with C4. And for those who know me, this is this is just the opening. I like the English opening. And usually the idea is to uh for white to try and control the light squares and black usually has the option of either fighting for the light squares and contesting them or fighting for the dark squares. Um so okay, we won't we won't get into too much opening theory. So Immediately, my opponent is playing some questionable moves. I don't really know how to exploit them, but they just seemed a little bit strange. Usually, black plays some form of striking in the center, like uh, like d5, maybe e5. Um, like, for example, uh, knight c6 and then e5 or something like that. Um, but he's playing this fianchetto line it's it's kinda weird okay so more weird moves he's still not attacking the center and I think it's a principled idea to uh, take the center if your opponent isn't going to do that so um yes rook b8 I think my opponent is just preparing a potential bishop trade if if that needs to happen okay I just castle e6 more of these um, moves that aren't controlling the center. <laughs> um, I mean, okay, you're you're fighting for a little bit of d5, but okay. I go ahead and play d4. Um, I, I'm trying to just you know gain more space and uh, you know just control the center here. Pretty simple stuff. Okay. Bishop b4, and I go I go queen c2. The idea is if my opponent takes, I want to be able to recapture with the queen so that my pawn structure isn't compromised. Okay, my opponent plays h6 here. Um, he wants to stop me from playing bishop g5. Um, yeah, I was thinking about that move, so maybe that's uh, maybe that's good. I go ahead and play a3. I want to see what this bishop wants to do. Um, and my idea here is um, the line I was looking at is if he decides to not pay attention and play something like uh, bishop e7. I thought I had d5. Um, let's see, d5, pawn takes, pawn takes, and. The only square this knight has is knight a5, and that knight doesn't really look too great. Um, and then maybe I can just play something like e4. Okay, but that didn't happen, so um, let's get back into the game here. So he actually takes after I put the question to it, and I recapture with the queen. So my pawn structure is a little more healthier. I mean, a little healthier than it would have been if I hadn't captured with the queen. Um, okay. So my opponent castles. He finally gets safe, and I go ahead and play b4. Now, these two pawns were already here grabbing some space. I figured I'd just reinforce that. And not only do I want to grab space on the queen side, my idea is to place this bishop on this very powerful diagonal and create a potentially deadly battery on um on g7 okay so my opponent plays 97 um, what I was thinking is he was gonna play something along the lines of knight g6 but I wasn't really sure like when he first did this I just thought mm, okay well I'll just continue with my plan here he's not really stopping me from doing anything I want to do so I went, went ahead and went bishop b2 d5 
so when I first saw this move my first thought was wow that's a pretty good move because I mean obviously he's stopping this he's kind of freezing my d4 pawn but now I'm not sure I'm not sure if this is a positional mistake after my next move um, which is c5 um, I haven't checked this out with a computer yet I I'd rather just do kind of more of an organic, you know, post-mortem instead of looking at a computer all the time. So, c5, what, what is my idea here? Well, if he plays something along the lines of b5, um, I could probably just play a4 and open the position and maybe my rooks get active on the a file. Um, I also have ideas of playing um, uh, something along the lines of say ninety five and then c six. Okay, so my opponent plays knight e four. Um, yeah, this this is like I I don't know I don't know about this move. It it doesn't seem like it's really that great because. I just go queen c2. Now I still have the same, the same pressure on on the c file here. Um, my my queen wasn't really doing anything on this diagonal anyway, so I'm not really sure that this was a great move for Black here. So my opponent goes bishop a6, and of course he's eyeing this, but for now e2 is defended and I decided to just go c6 immediately the point here is um, maybe I have these types of ideas uh, hitting these these two rooks now for if if you're a novice watching this um, one of the the ways a person can have an advantage is space and it's hard sometimes it's hard to figure out what to do with it so we can see that I have a space advantage here on the queen side um, and the point of having a space advantage is that when you have more space your opponent has less so that means he's more cramped so I wanted to put even more pressure on black's position here and really just ask him where his piece is going um, meanwhile I have uh, potential uh, pawn march ideas and I always have maybe even a5 ideas um, to just break open the open the position and you know throw my rooks on the a file so that's that's one of the ways you can um, use your space advantage to just squeeze your opponent and that that was the point of c6 okay so my opponent plays f6 and I was like okay this is this is a pretty good move because he's stopping me from playing knight knight e5 here okay so I go ahead and decide I wanna start this plan here and uh, my idea is say black does a waiting move I just play b5 and then he's bishop goes to c8 and he looks ridiculous okay so my opponent decides to sink his bishop into c4 and I think this is probably the best practical choice um, he's still keeping this pressure on e2 and he's not as passive as he would be if I had closed him off oh so I took a long think here yeah and I decided to go knight e5 the point here is okay not only am I attacking the bishop I'm still threatening this um, and I have a little tactical idea here so my opponent takes which is of course what you have to calculate and then I go ahead and, and play bishop takes e4 now the point is if he takes I recapture my pot my opponent has triple pawns and I'm also threatening the pawn after the recapture with check so that was the point but my opponent didn't go for for the recapture here he he captures on d4 um, I go bishop takes d4 and yes not sure that this was the best move maybe 
Maybe b5 first. But okay. I, I take on d4. And my opponent grabs c6. That's why I say maybe b, b5 was better. To, to maintain that pretty strong pawn. Okay. So... Here I took another long think. I can't remember exactly how much time each of us had, but I was down on time. <laughs> so, okay, he's threatening this. Now, I had to take a think here because I, I wanted to calculate and make sure that there was nothing happening here. And I was calculating lines like, uh, well, let's just try and get into one, for example. Like, here. And then I, I calculated... Um, you know, if if king, if king f7, queen check, uh, you know, and, and then I thought this was just pretty good, pretty good for white here. I mean, maybe it's not a, like an immediate mate or anything, but I was like, okay, that's good enough. So, if I consider that move good, I have to consider what happens if he goes to h8 which is actually what he did in the game so let's let's actually look at that um, I, I checked and then what I had to calculate was whether this bishop sacrifice worked and it doesn't so yeah the line I had to look at was um, obviously bishop takes king takes king back and then I really don't have a, a good follow-up after uh, say queen d7 couldn't say anything too too great I mean okay bishop check and nothing nothing really great going on I mean it looks kinda dangerous but there's no finish here and I didn't I didn't like that so because I couldn't find a, a decent move I just end up um like where's Where's the right line here? So king h8. Um, sorry, I'm I'm looking for the the actual game variation here. I check king h8. Whoops, and then and then I I just drop back. Bishop b2. So, my opponent plays e5. He he wants to close off this um, this diagonal, rightfully so, because say he was just oblivious and just went rook here. Now I have my queen on g6 and I'm threatening threatening a mate here. So, or at least just taking because this pawn would be pinned. So he wants to close off this diagonal, rightfully so. And I decide b5. Now, for some reason, I, I just wasn't calculating his move here. Um, I was just calculating, okay, knight e7, and then I just grab here, and my opponent, my opponent is in trouble. So, and of course, you know, knight b4. I just, I just go queen, queen c3, and the knight is basically close to cooked there um you know if say queen blocks and i have like um bishop a3 i mean queen defends bishop a3 okay so that was all the stuff i looked at but i didn't look at this <laughs> so now he's hitting uh he's hitting e2 twice so I was like, okay, is there any way I can kind of just like queen here? But no, not really. Um, so I have to take this. And now I just decided, okay, let's let's get into this. I go bishop d d3. The idea is his bishop has nowhere to go. Um, his queen has no way to further reinforce this. So like, imagine if his queen could teleport to a light square, then he could wait for wait for me to capture and then recapture but he doesn't have that so he's forced to take queen here and here we're we're pretty low on time I think we're both of us are under um three minutes here 
So here I blunder. <laughs> so I think I'm probably winning just after um, rook a d1. And then I just pick up this pawn and eventually, like maybe if he tries to attack this, I, I go like... I mean, even if he attacks, I just pick up the pawn. Queen takes. He grabs his pawn. I grab this one, and I'm I'm just in better shape there. But okay, so I blundered, and I actually go uh, f f to d1. So yeah, I blunder this pawn. My opponent doesn't see it. He continues with his plan of just centralizing his rooks, and I still don't see it. Like when I blundered the pawn, I didn't see it, and I still don't see it. So. <laughs> Right, I just try to defend this, still completely oblivious to the fact that I blundered the pawn. So my opponent doesn't miss it twice. And it, if you can imagine, you know, we've been battling for a long time. And after I see this, I was feeling good throughout the whole game. I'm looking at this and I'm just like, oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> now I'm not feeling too well. So here, uh, now I'm just like, man, what did I do? I wasn't paying attention. But okay, king h1, only move. Now my opponent really wants to hang on to this pawn. Um, I decide I need to get some sort of counterplay, and I go rook c2. The point is, I'm putting pressure on c7. Um, I, I'd also like to point out these pawns. These pawns that were, um, you know, kind of creeping up the board earlier in the game, they're still their value is is still apparent here because um, these two guys are holding back these three pawns here you know any pawn push I just take um, so so these are these are pretty strong so yeah I want to just put pressure on on c7 here my opponent defends and right I go queen d2 now my idea here is okay I'm not getting this pawn anytime soon so what I'd like to do is get the Queens off so actually my idea is Queen d2 Queen e1 and basically try and force a Queen trade now here my opponent is just consolidating and I'm I'm pretty sure I can hold but I'm just not feeling great after you know feeling like I had an advantage earlier so I go on with my plan and here my opponent blunders and and takes takes here on e2 which pretty much loses immediately after uh, queen takes f2 um, after rook takes rook takes uh, my opponent is down a rook and he resigned here so I got a little bit lucky um, at the end there I think actually here my opponent had more time than I did. I think I was at about one minute thirty seven and he he had over two minutes, so he could have taken a little bit more time um, so hopefully some of those ideas like uh space advantage were were instructional, and I hope you guys enjoyed this um post mortem analysis uh what are some other things to take away here um in the opening, if your opponent's playing like weird moves, doesn't want to give you the center, feel free to take it. Because if you're if you're able to grab the center, then perhaps you can convert that into a space advantage or um you know, just a, a strong position where all your pieces are kind of uh coordinated well. So I mean th this is like this is just ridiculous his king isn't castled yet, his bishop isn't out, and he's already doing this type of stuff. Uh, perhaps I didn't exploit it, you know, in the best way possible or the most accurate way, but I think this is still um, instructional. And I think the fact that he wasted that time contributed to his uh, worst position during the middle game. So, okay. Um, is there anything else here? Space advantage... Did my opponent have a better move than d5? Not really sure. Maybe like d6 and then e5. 
It's it's hard to say. Okay, so I hope you guys enjoyed that, and uh, I'll catch you guys next time. Um, all likes, subscribes, comments, and shares are appreciated. All right, thanks, guys. Bye-bye.